You're at the high nibble for the more significant bits. Well, welcome to this long overdue feature video. And this time we're going to have a look at the Kremenko Cyclops digital camera. So this is the world's first digital camera. Um, Kremenko invented the product um, and created a new category that we all, all benefit from to this day. Um, the history is all available online. I think there's a pretty decent Wikipedia article. I might throw a link in the description below. But basically, um, by ripping the, the cover off a 1K uh, static RAM chip, uh, they discovered that the contents of the memory degraded as it was exposed to light uh, and changed quickly over a short period of time. And you know, I'm sure there was a bit more to it, but effectively by using a camera lens and focusing that light down on the surface of the memory, uh, they were able to fabricate what is the Cyclops uh, digital camera. Now, last year, uh, somebody made a accurate hardware uh, replica of that Cyclops. And upon seeing that, I thought, wow, that's an addition we need to have for the IMSE 8080 ESP. So at the moment, um, it's all simulated in software. So the Cyclops device actually captures your web camera. So when you open up the Cyclops, uh, you'll notice compared to other devices that it is not connected by default. Uh, when you do connect it, uh, ha ha, oh, there it goes. Um, if things are set up properly, and I'm gonna have to go through some details of that with you later, uh, it captures your web camera. And then some code on the client side in the desktop user interface down samples that to both black and white, 16 shades of gray, and I think a resolution of 32 by 32 pixels. So not a lot, but enough to see what's going on. The magic of it was, in fact, I believe the story goes that Kremenko um, came up with the Cyclops first, and then not having a reasonable device to display the output on motivated them to create the Dazzler. So to see the Cyclops in action, we need the Dazzler running and uh, we'll bring up a terminal to kick things off. I don't think I've even hit the run switch yet, so here we go. Right, we're into CPM. Now, the software that you'll wanna to use to see this in action is sitting on a disk supplied in the library, the cyclops.dsk. I've already got that mounted in drive D. So I'll switch over to D. There's um, all the programs from the original Cyclops um, user manual are included. Uh, the version one and three, the CCC1, CCC3 are directly as they were from the manual, but there were actually errors in CCC3. So I've created CCC3B and with some educated guesswork, corrected the errors and got this thing to run. So we are really running the original code as published in the user manual for this device back in 1970, I think six, here on the, uh, our IMSE replica. So without further ado, let's fire it up. And here we go. If we had, um, if, if the concept of live streaming had existed in 1976, this is possibly what it might've looked like. So hi, Oop, I put my hand in the right place. Hi, I'm Dave from the High Nibble, and you're watching me on my Cyclops Dazzler, thanks to my Cyclops, sorry, um, you're watching me on my Kremenko Dazzler, courtesy of my Kremenko Cyclops digital camera. So you can see that uh, with the speed of the simulated CPU, and that's really the constraint here, even running at four megahertz, uh, the best we can get is around a little over one frame per second. Uh, somebody published uh, an improved version of the code um, up on uh, Udo Monk's Z80 Pack site, and or, or Udo included it, and it reportedly runs at a higher frame rate, but it's 
doing something a bit odd and causing the Dazzler to blank after every frame. So I want to have a look at that code and see if we can improve on that. So let's uh, get the terminal out of the way. In fact, and apologize that this isn't centered. It looks so much better if it was, but that's an issue with Chrome right now. We'll go full screen and uh, you know, this is what Skyping or um, FaceTiming or live streaming you know, could have, might have, would have looked like if anyone had thought, I mean, the, the, uh, the bones of the internet were around, but I don't know if I haven't seen any ex uh, evidence that anyone thought to hook up their digital camera on one side of a network uh, to a dis graphics display at another site at the other end of the network. So it would be really interesting if anyone knows anything about uh, that possibly happening. So these pictures behind me, oh, wrong side, everything's reversed. I'm not, not a really experienced uh, guy behind the camera. These pictures behind me is a triptych of my kids when they were younger. Of course, you can see the details of my son and daughter in each of the three pictures. Uh, I think the third one's just out of shot. Of course, you can see uh, with the detail that the uh, camera's providing, you can see that I've got about uh, four days of unshavedness uh, as I've been on holidays up until now. And um, yeah, I mean, the clarity is astounding. Funnily enough, and I encourage you to try it now, squint your eyes about as much as you can, but still see the image. And suddenly, without what's actually on the screen in front of you being any clearer, the image appears a lot more um, realistic. So that's an interesting optical trick. Uh, let's get back, I'll just get out of full screen mode. And um, let's have a look at what the features here are of the Cyclops itself. Now the Cyclops is actually a, a two part product. There was the Cyclops camera and that is actually called the CCC. Uh, and there's a separate manual for that, uh, which ships in the documentation. So let's just have a look in the manual library here. So yeah, we've got the Kremenko 88 CCC manual in the library, in the manual library. So that's for the camera itself then the camera had to be connected to a dedicated S100 bus card, which I believe is the Kremco 88 ACC. So, you know, the desktop user interface is just providing the CCC and sending the, as far as I can tell, the um, exact bitstream that would have come from a genuine hardware-based Cyclops over web sockets back to the web server sitting on the ESP32 and then in the IMSE 8080 um, firmware stack on the ESP32 I am emulating the ACC which breaks that uh, bitstream down and then puts it in memory in the right places um, and behaves as best as it can as if it's doing DMA. So if you could see the face of my IMSA 8080 now, you would notice for a change, because not many things do this, the hold light is periodically flashing. And that indicates that there is direct memory access taking place and blocking other things from accessing the RAM. So we are trying to be as authentic as we can be. And of course, as I said, the software that's running is the actual code straight from the um, ACC manual. Let's just open it up and have a look, see if I'm telling you the, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Whoop, uh, nope, parts, so this is the build side of it. Okay, ACC, oh, I've got them back to front, I apologize. The ACC is the digital camera. There you go, 1024 elements, 32 by 32 bit image sensor based on a um, 1K RAM chip. So let's get back. Okay, so just to reset there, the ACC is the camera, the CCC is the camera capture card. So, yeah, CCC Cyclops, camera controller, oh well, close. And uh, here it is, doing DMA, direct memory access. Uh, that's what 
ACC stands for. The Cyclops was originally built to work with the Altair, but of course, being bus compatible, works equally well in the IMSA. And this guide has, after a while, the test programs. Here they go, CCC1, which is sitting on the Cyclops disc, and CCC2 I haven't bothered with because displaying video as text on a teletype didn't seem compelling uh, to me. Um, somebody else might have a go at putting that in. And here's CCC3. But somewhere along the way, when you work through the, the, uh, the bytes and the machine code mnemonics, there's a few jump references uh, where, that have got the wrong addresses and the loop crashes into itself. So I fixed that up, uh, which is what gives us CCC3B. So this is the code that we are running when we look at the image on the Dazzler now. So yep, it's all there in the kit. Now, the last few little features hiding in the Cyclops implementation here are, and you're gonna to have to watch closely because I'm not gonna spend long because I'm a little camera shy when I'm at a higher resolution than 32 by 32. Uh, if you double click on the camera icon, you actually see what is the live video feed from your web camera. If you double click again, you see an approximation of the down sampled um, version of what uh, the live feed from the camera is being converted to. But you'll notice it's only getting updated at the frame rate. Um, so in fact, this is um, a representation of the byte stream, the bit stream that's being sent off over the web socket. And then double click again, because we don't want these sort of artificial things getting in the way. We want to see the Cyclops camera because it's beautiful. So what's going on up here? Um, this red light pulses every time the controller in the IMSA 8080 requests a new frame. This light would come on if the program had issued the command for the low light mode. Now, because we don't have um, the real hardware to emulate that, it's slightly simulated by a bit of um, histogram compression in the way I'm processing the color image and downsampling it. So you do get a, a washed out look, or if you're in low light, you can just make out some details slightly better. Uh, but it has to be software controlled from the program running on your IMSA. Here, uh, these are reflecting, this first and second value are reflecting, again, parameters that are sent by the camera controller card, or the Cyclops controller card, to put the camera in a particular frame rate mode, um, which is how many slices the data gets broken down into to make the bitstream. And I think, from what I could tell, uh, 14 is the maximum producing 15 bits no, 15 values per pixel. So not quite 16 shades of gray, we're only dealing with 15 shades of gray. And the frames per second I'm calculating based on the rate of pulsing of the signal from the camera controller card to tell you, because it's not the camera that's controlling the frame rate, it's the controller card and the software that's driving the controller card, its rate of execution. And of course that's constrained by the speed of your simulated CPU. So on the IMSA 8080 replica, it's very, um, you can reliably run at four megahertz. So this is what we get from a four megahertz simulated CPU. If you're running Z80 pack on a, on a regular PC, uh, you can get this up significantly higher because the CP, simulated CPU can run significantly faster. But then that's completely not authentic because you know, an original IMSA 8080 never ran that fast. Okay, final words are, if you try this out yourself right now, you will be frustrated that you can't get the camera to connect when you click on this icon. So uh, let me just rev back up. I'm gonna stop the program, disconnect the camera from my web camera and its, and its web socket. So it's released my web camera and it's uh, broken the connection with its web socket. So this is the starting position. When you click this icon, you will not get a connection like I have and your web camera will not be connected. And the reason for it is that the whole desktop user interface runs over HTTP, not HTTPS, 
and Chrome, uh, Google and Chrome development in their wisdom have decided to not let you capture media devices over unsecure connections like ATT, HTTP. So to work around that problem, you have to um, go in and change a Chrome flag. So let me change to that screen now. So if you don't know how to change Chrome flags, you just go up to the address bar and put in a URL, chrome colon slash slash flags, which brings you to this screen. Now hopefully this option appears at the top of the list, but if it doesn't, you'll have to go scrolling through this whole massive list of options until you find the one that says insecure origins treated as secure. Now a word of advice, this field, every time you restart the browser, this field is empty. So every time you want to demonstrate your Cyclops, um, Chromemco Cyclops camera, you are going to have to come in here uh, to the Chrome flags and type HTTP um, colon slash slash mc8080.local. The bad news is every time you enter this um, page and find that empty and you come in and you faithfully type HTTP colon slash slash imsay8080.local um, even especially after you've enabled it the first time this setting remains at enabled it's just that the um, the URL field is cleared suddenly you're wondering where the um, confirmation button is it doesn't always show up if that happens to you just pop in here switch it to disabled and back again to enabled and when you do that this bar at the bottom will reappear allowing you to relaunch your browser with that secure uh, or that trusted URL for the next duration of the next session. So here with the browser restarted, yes, it's locked in for now. It won't be here the next time we launch the browser, but that will enable you to get back to your IMSA desktop And now when you open your Cyclops device, the ACC device, and hit the connect button. Now it may not be as quick as that. It might take a little time to register, um, but you should get the WebSocket connection going green. If you've got an indicator light on your web camera, it should light up. You can double click the camera to check the feed. If you double click it again, you'll see there's nothing being transmitted over the bitstream because there's no software querying the camera for the bitstream. Remember, the camera is driven by the software communicating through the CCC device in your IMSA that speaking to the camera. So it's only when we launch, uh, let's get everything set up properly. It's only when we launch a program that's going to want to query the camera that the camera starts to respond and issue the byte stream, the bit stream. Well, that's ended up being a bit longer than I expected, but um, I it's all pretty exciting. I really, really love this addition to the IMSA 8080. I hope you do too. It can be lots of fun to play with. There are some amazing videos online of projects that the Kremenko folks did with this device. One was getting uh, a IMSA 8080 to control a marble maze using this camera, the Cyclops, looking down on the top of a white um, marble maze board with a black marble and a computer program controlling two servos to tilt the table to navigate around the marble maze. Amazing at 32 by 32 pixels. There must have literally been a pixel for each square inch of the maze. If I can find a link for that, I will put it in the description below. Enjoy, and we'll see you at the next video. Bye. Got to move slower for one frame a second. Bye.